Yo, what's up, fams? Uh, welcome back to the Adi Salve podcast. I've been offline for a while, but I'm back. I'm back with my guy. But before we start, let's roll the intro. <laughs> This is Gandhi's favorite song. <laughs> Here we go. Yo, what's up? Welcome back. Um, yeah, lucky enough. Uh, first podcast for 220. I have the beast in the building. Um, Sup, Uzo? What's up, bro? Uh, thanks uh, for having me on your podcast, brother. It's all good. For the people that don't know, also introduce yourself. Um, give a bit of background about yourself, Mose. Yeah, so um, born and bred in Palmerston North. Um, went to school and uh, went to school at Palmy Boys. Uh, both of my parents are full Tongan and, and uh, currently in Wellington. And um, yeah, nice also. Um, and obviously, we've been into pre-season, bro. What have you been up to? Um, we had the break. What did you get up to with the family, man? Yeah, so uh, after ITM Cup, uh, me and my brothers and my mum were in Tonga. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, so I was in Tonga for a week, and uh, yeah, it was just an eye opener, and uh, it was just good to go back to the islands to to see how my mum and dad grew up, and uh, to see all the family that I haven't seen in a long time, and uh, in uh, the following week, uh, me and I uh, took my partner, and my kids to Fiji, and um, now the kids loved it, and just had an awesome time. Minus, um, was that the first time you've been to Tonga or not? Nah? Back to Tonga or not? Nah? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nah, that's my second time, but the first time um had to go take care of some business the first time. Oh hey. If you know what that means. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, nah, well, what is it? <laughs> <laughs> nah, so yeah, my second time. So yeah. Oh man. <laughs> uh but yeah, like in Tonga were you treated um like differently or was he just, you know, the same old nuns, you know, to the family and stuff like that? No, I was, um, yeah, like I, like when I went back, I didn't really see myself as, um, I just saw myself as just one of the cousins coming over and just um, just someone that wanted to experience um, the life that my parents um, oh. um, experienced as growing up. And um, it was awesome because my mum uh, took me to um, where my grandparents uh, buried and stuff. And um, um, it was just, yeah, just an awesome experience. Yeah, bro, that's... Um that would have been me, and I seen you caught up with Connie and that over there. Was yeah. he? Was he meant to? Were you guys meant to be at this in Tonga at the same time, or just bumped into each other? No, nah, no, nah, it was just like, um, like I didn't even plan, plan this Tongan trip. It was just like, um, like after not making yeah. um, the World Cup team, I was like, oh, yes, yeah, is all good. Um, so I was like, oh, like, um, like oh, there's good opportunity for me to go back. Um, to the island, so and then me and my brother, I just hit up my brothers. I was like, "Oh, hey, um, like I want to go back and to Tonga and experience the life that um <coughs> that mum and dad did." And but the good thing for me was, um, two of my older brothers were brought up in in Tonga and and they kind of understood um the way of life there. Yeah. But um, but it was just also for me to have um them there because um you know they showed me around and. And yeah, just made it easier, right? Eh? Yeah, yeah, just made it easier, and um, they knew um, the way around the islands and yeah. and stuff like that. So, and you mentioned Fiji also. I know, like that's kind of one of my favorite spots to go because it's just a chill. How important is it? Do you um, do you find that like having a bit of downtime or getting away from, I guess, the country and just spending some time and getting away from the game? Yeah, I think yeah, I think like you said, like it's good to get away, but um, like I think. I'm a pretty lazy person Like I just like to Just chill Chill um, Chill at home But I think for me Like the main thing Was just taking um, My partner Out of New Zealand And Because The public don't see that um, You know the, Obviously the players get Affected um, With what happens On the field and stuff But also the partners yeah. um, They go They go through it With us And um, So for me Like I wanted uh, My partner And my kids To have uh, awesome time in the holiday because um, you know she deserved it and uh, she was there throughout me f- uh, with me throughout the whole year. So because they they cop it more than us, I reckon. Because when we're grumpy, we kind of like take it out on them, eh? we and they're like they don't even know what to do sometimes, eh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I try not to take 
um, my training late home, but you know we're humans, um, yeah, hard. as you know. And uh, but yeah, like I said, like yeah, um, like our partners, uh, like the ones who kind of clean up after us, after us, if that uh, makes sense. Like they, um, you know, they pick up the family, they look after They're the, the backbone, kids. Eh? yeah, yeah, hundred percent of the family. Um, we're just the ones that are playing on the field in the, the day, but. Um, they take care of um, us off the field. Hundred percent. And preseason, um, how's that been going? Us, we getting fucked. Well, it's probably been like um, one of the hardest preseasons, but um, no, it's been good. Uh, what have you guys been doing here? Just, just running, eh? <laughs> <laughs> you looking um, good, also. <laughs> nah, just been running, uh, working on our skills and stuff. I just love seeing the new guys, new faces, um, a lot of hungry new guys, and and just awesome to see. Yeah, how's that all um, all been? Because obviously there'll be, like you know, there's a few players that have left um, from last year, um, and there's a bunch of new fellas coming through. Has, has has it been weird, kind of being around, you know, and it's not feeling the same, or is it kind of like a blessing, like you know, it's a new challenge for for, for the team for the Hurricanes? Yeah, um, like. It's, uh, for me, like I find it exciting because, like for me, I was one of the young guys, like hungry as to play and and like seeing them, seeing the young guys like turn up to training, happy as, um, you know, it's just it just makes me go back to when I was young, hungry as. So, um, and also like um, seeing all the new faces in that, um, like yeah, makes me feel old, but <laughs> yeah, but I'm not that old. Yeah. And um, you know, obviously, you know, Alfie becoming the coach, you'll be um, happy with that. <laughs> He's not my dad, but <laughs> no, my dad left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, nah, but uh, you know, obviously, you know, with the Canes this year, uh, massive um, year. You know, like there's been like news there, like you know, obviously, how we're going to cope with. Um, Bodhi leaving mm. and stuff like that. Like, um, what are your thoughts on this year? Like, how how's the team feeling? Um, what do you, you know? What's your personal goals this year, bro? In terms of Super Rugby space? Um, yeah, like obviously, like with Bodhi leaving in there. Like for the last four years, I learned so much um, off Bodhi in there. But um, now I think, like, I think it's like a good challenge for me now. Like um, every day of training, every game, I got to be on. Um, on my best form and, and I'm just looking forward to that challenge because uh, um, you know I can't rely on Bodhi all the time so um, yeah Minos, um you know like obviously you know we'll strip it right back um, you know you were a kid when you were a kid playing footy growing up um, your family um, how was it playing I guess we'll stick with footy as well how, how was it playing you know at Palmy Boys because um, I remember when I was playing against you, you were like, the size you are now is the size you are at college. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, like, tell us a bit about that. Did you, and obviously, um, yeah, like, tell us about that journey of college and after that and going through all that, bro. Yeah, so, like, um, like obviously, like, well, first it kind of started, like, um, like, I lived in this place called Highbury and, um, like, we had like a cul-de-sac and it was like a field in the middle of the cul-de-sac. So, and we had like heaps of islanders, Tongans, Maoris, whatever. Mm. Um, we were all in these state houses, which is, which surrounded the field. And um, every day there was always be a game of game of uh, game of touch. And um, and that's where I kind of just fell in love with the game. Um, and then obviously went to essentially normal um, intermediate. Yeah. And then uh, high school, and then um, obviously had like some pretty good mates. Yeah, um, they went to Palmy Boys as well, and like obviously like uh, playing rugby and that. Um, like they kind of helped me find friends, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Because um, we all had the same interests, and I guess when I went to Palmy Boys, it was kind of different because like they're pretty strict. Like I remember the first day I went to Palmy Boys, I got sent. Sent home straight away. <laughs> what is that? Uh, What'd you do? Yeah, because I, I think I came to school with like an afro or something and like you had to cut your hair and you have to like pull your socks up. 
Oh, yeah. Tuck your shirt in, yeah. I thought I was a man. Walk up in the first day with an Afro <laughs> shirt out, <laughs> socks down. And then I remember the year 19 was like, nah, get out. Yeah. And that's where it kind of hit me. Yeah. Oh, you know, I'm. This is real, eh? Yeah, this is real. Dog. Like, this is. Because Palmy Boys is like one of the top, like, top schools or rugby schools in yeah. New Zealand, eh? Or well, got the reputation of. Yeah, is like, it? yeah, they do, um, like, good for themselves, like, especially for a small place like Palmy. But I think, um, like for Palmy, it's like the way that they um, like teach their kids in it. Like yeah, yeah. it's all strict, and like we get a lot of farm boys, so they're like you know they're strong, strong guys from working on the farm and stuff. And then we obviously we get a few brown brothers um, yeah. around, so it's, yeah, it's a pretty good mix. Yeah, bro, and like uh, for you guys that don't know, I used to play guns and um, under sixteens. And um, he used to be the, like, the name was Ngani. Like, and he used to play eight. Hey, you were eight. And I was flanker, so I always had to, because their, their go-to yeah. move, set-piece moves, was Ngani picked the ball up from the scrum <laughs> and run. And I had to always try and tackle him. But um, tell us a bit about that, because I remember, but I remember that game when um, Jay got the kick over and you started putting the, you're yeah. like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> That's so you, man. Yeah. Nah, so what happened was, um, so we played you guys on the first day, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was obviously a close game, and we just, yeah, we just, um, we just won. And then I think you guys had a game the next day, and you guys were first, and you guys had a big scrap. Yeah, yeah, against Hawks Bay. Yeah, against Hawks Bay, and then so and you guys won, and then we played Tanaki, and if we lost, you guys would have well, took the shield. You guys won, eh? So, <laughs> so going into the game, we were like, oh man, we should be able to get Tanaki, and then. The first half, Tanaki were like smashing us, and then I could hear, and then I could hear um, these boys on the sala and stuff. And I turned around, was all the Wellington boys going Chee! like you know, saying blah blah blah. And then we end, eventually ended up catching up, and then um, my mate Jay Tarudi, um he just got married, eh? Yeah, yeah. yeah so man. congrats to him and uh, him and Hannah on their wedding on the weekend. It was, uh, it was pretty lit. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but um, yeah, so yeah, I think we scored on the last play, and Jade uh, had to get the conversion over. Yeah, eh? Jade had to get the conversion over, and then as uh, as Jade was setting up, I told him, "Hey, better get it over. I'll give you a hug." <laughs> <laughs> You're a bit like yeah. that. Eh? I remember you like that. Eh? <laughs> yeah, so but yeah, to this day we still talk about it. Um, but yeah, so. Shot Jay for getting that kick over, <laughs> and then I remember turning around looking at you guys like, yes. And then obviously from 16s, um, you know, we journeyed and made schools together. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I know where this is going. I yeah. know where this is going. Tell us a bit about New Zealand schools as well. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> man, but when I look back at that New Zealand schools team, well, like, Bro, uh, who, who who was part of our team? We had Patrick Tupper Lots, T- Patrick Roger, two of us, a Sheik, yeah. Jason Emery, yeah, Jason Emery, um, um, Lolangi Vesinia, yeah, Joe Weber, Joe Weber, Scotty Scrafton, yeah, Scotty Scraft, Scott Barrett, Scotty B, yeah, Sione, Sione, Filio, who else, bro? Oh, it was he, eh? so yeah, we still lost. <laughs> We still lost. (laughs) (laughs) But, um, you know, obviously, like, being in the schools, was that kind of like the first taste of, like, professionalism for you? Or was it, like, you know, like, getting, like, the Adidas kit, like, travelling and stuff like that? Or that wasn't too bad? Yeah, like, it was like, you know, like, when you're in school, like, New Zealand schools, it's like, you know, the All Blacks, like, if you make New Zealand schools, you, like, think, Know that you're gonna make it. <laughs> you made it, eh? Yeah. But um, but like I wasn't even supposed to be there, bro. Like, <clears throat> like our last game of uh of our first fifteen season, um, we played Napier, and then this guy hit me, and then I actually like uh, actually did my ACL. So then, uh, like, I went and seen the specialist, and he was like, "Oh, you can get surgery now, or." You can rehab it for eight weeks and then you can try and get... Um, get it out on the field again. Yeah, yeah. And then hopefully you'll make New Zealand school. So I was like, oh, 
Um, I got a bit of time on my hands. Um, you know, I can try and you know have no regrets and try and make New Zealand schools, and then I can have operation after that. Yeah, yeah. and then um, yeah, I remember we played. Was it we played Waikato Twenties yeah, in Hamilton? Yeah. And I remember the coach was like, "You just got to get through the four, first forty minutes, and then um, you can come with us to Australia." It was in Sydney, eh? Was it Sydney? Yeah, yeah, Sydney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, um, yeah, and then, yeah, I got through the, the first 40, um, just avoiding everyone, <laughs> trying not to, uh, to carry in there. And then once I got through the 40, um, 40 minutes, the play, eh? I was like, yes. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, yeah, I don't have to go back home. Any any great memories? I know, like, we had a bunch of great guys in the team. Any great memories from the school's tour that, like, really stood out for you? Yeah, I think... <clears throat> I think there was like a one moment in that game where like when you think about it, like we were eighteen year olds and then like um I remember this guy from like Wakat here, like the big ass beard, like trying to fight everyone and then I remember like Patty like he made Patty angry and it was like I think it was like five on one. He didn't make Patty yeah. angry. <laughs> and then like I think he was just like smashing them in the rock by himself and I remember I was like, Oh yeah, I don't um, wanna be a part of that. And, um, tell us a bit about um you know, obviously, you and uh, um, your best mate, Jace, you know. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. oh. I don't know. Do you reckon it's safe to say our story now? Hey, it doesn't yeah, matter. Sure, hey, yeah. right. tell, us, t- tell us that story, bro, at, at school. This is in Australia, yeah. in the 18th. Because my mate over here was changes, eh? <laughs> 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 so, I'm the captain. Yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah. Oh, man. Nah, so, um, it was after our last game, man. Eh? Yeah. It was after yeah. our last game, um, you know, uh, we got back to, because um, we were staying at the Manly training grounds, um, you know, we had like a pretty daytime game, eh? Yeah. And all the boys were like, oh, what should we do? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what should we do? What should we do? And then um, and then we like looked down in the team room and then we seen all the stuff, the coach and they were all like, you know, having a good time, they were drinking and we were like, oh. They're having a good time, why don't we have a good time? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I was like, oh yeah. But the moment there was like a couple of us. Um, I don't want to name those guys, but I'll name Jason Emery. <laughs> 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 uh, then, uh, so yeah, uh, like if you haven't been to the Manly um, playing ground, like so there's like the hostel or like the change room, I mean the apartments or whatever up on the hill. And then you like kind of walk down the hill and there's like a rugby field. So, it was probably like what eight o'clock. I oh, know. So yeah, we, like we all got changed. We were like, we were like, oh, ads, um, <laughs> it's all good. We go out, come, come, and you're like, nah, nah, nah. I'm the captain, eh, or something like that, eh? Yeah. And they were like, yeah, nah, sweet, sweet, was like, you're the man. <laughs> nah, nah. Nah, nah. Nah. No, I tell you, what, yeah, I wanted to come out, but I, I stayed back to yeah. cover your yeah, just yeah. There. And then, um, so yeah, so we were like. Like the Manly train ground is probably like what 10 15 minutes out from uh, it's yeah, it's quite far. Or yeah, yeah, it was out, and then we're like all just standing on the road, and then we're all just like <laughs> <laughs> it was dark too. And we all got our you know, got our thumbs out, um, trying to hitchhike our way into town. And then, um, then this taxi van just happens to pull over, had no one in it, and it was heading to town. We we're like, oh, yo, jump can in. we jump in? And then, um, yeah, so we were like. Well, went to town, had a good time, came back, and then <laughs> yeah, then me and my mate Justin Emery decided to carry on. But uh, yeah, so now nah, it was a good night. It was a good night. It was good, um, eh? You know, those are the um, the moments that I remember, and and um, you know, now I can laugh, um, laugh, you know, look back and laugh, and um, and uh, it was good times. And uh, yeah. <laughs> the coaches that were part of that team are probably listening. Are you know, <laughs> You are the shakers, eh? And then, um, you know, obviously, you know, s- schools happen and then a lot of things change for you. Um, uh, heading to league, sh- you know, straight away or, yeah, how was, what was that journey like, bro? What, how, how, how did you end up come, going from union to league? Um, what was, what went on yeah. there, bro? Yeah, bro, I think, like, because obviously I played schools and then I got surgery on my knee. So, um uh, like for me, because I had already signed the contract uh, with the Warriors on my team for me, because I um because the Toyota Cup was you know it was pumping, 
at that time, you know, you've seen like the likes of Sam Lousy, um, Omar Slimanko, Siwa Tokiaho and, and Conrad Harrell. You know, you saw them every Sunday on Toyota Cup, so I was like, oh. Yo, this is big time, eh? Yeah, yeah like, you know, because at that time it was hard for for a player straight out of school to go play yeah. ITM Cup. Yeah. At that time. Because it was, now, like, yeah, it was hot, eh? Yeah, but, but now, like, it's it's happening. So for me, it was like, oh, like, you know, you know, if, you know, I can try get get myself to play in the Toyota Cup and then hopefully play. Did the did the Warriors approach you, or did you kind of approach or ask yeah. your agent to approach them? It's kind of weird, like, um, because like uh, this league guy kind of knew um, that I played rugby in there, and then they're like, oh, we're going to counties, um, we're going to counties. Um, they're the top team, blah blah blah, and yeah. they got these two hot um, centers, and then I was like, oh, sweet, whatever, like. Just yeah. go, whatever happens, happens. And then when I get there, um, the centre that I was marking was Roger. <laughs> <laughs> and then... Uh-oh, yeah. did you hear your ankles broken or what? Nah. Um, yeah, he was sharp, yeah. Yeah, my ankles were broken. But um, yeah, so we ended up playing and then I think we just lost. But then um, then the Warriors gave me a call and they were like, oh, yo, like, we're, king. we're killing King, blah, blah, blah. So then that's how that kind of happened. And then, um, yeah, and then I moved to uh, straight from Auckland. I mean, straight from Palmy to Auckland. Yeah. And then... Uh, how many years did you spend in Toyota Cup? Uh, I spent one year. Oh, and then it went straight to NRL? Yeah, yeah. So I spent one one year, um, 20s, and then went to... Um, Bro, is it, is it, is it hard... Like, cause you like you, so, like when I watch Toyota Cup, sometimes there's like heaps of talent, yeah. especially like because New Zealand, um, the under twenties, they would always win the cha- like they always win a day. There was yeah. a period day. Eh? Yeah, like, um, like there's so much talent in New Zealand and Auckland, especially, um, but like, I think the the best thing about um, the uh, what's it the New Zealand Warriors twenties um, was like there was heaps of like. Like guys who didn't have much growing up, yeah. So we were like, "Oh shit, we like we got like this doesn't work out." Yeah, yeah. Like, well, like you know, we got nothing. So we were like, "Oh, let's just all go hard yeah. and, and try and make our name for ourselves, and then hopefully we can all get contracts in it." But at the you know, as you know, um, the Warriors couldn't sign or everyone. Yeah, eh? all of them. So you know, who was lucky to go overseas was lucky, and um, yeah, and um, you know. Signing with the Warriors and the NRL, being part of that team, bro. Like, um, how was I guess how was that journey? Um, you know, coming from Union and then learning to play league. Yeah. Um, how was how was how was that kind of transition, bro? And or, and playing like you know NRL. Yeah. So it was like, so I played my first year, um, in the twenties, and then there was actually another guy. I'm not gonna say his name, but he was supposed to go train. With the top side. Oh, okay. And then I think he kind of said something, blah, 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 to think, and then they're like, nah, we won't take him. And then... Um, gave you an opportunity. Yeah, gave me an opportunity. And, and then I remember getting the calls, like, oh, do you want to come up um, earlier and do pre-season with the NRL um, group? And then I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah. Like, you know, like, this cool is not knowing that NRL <laughs> pre-season was like, was like torture, eh? So, Which is harder, Union or NRL? Nah, def- like, yeah, nah, hands down, definitely NRL, okay. like, like um, pre-season. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's like torture, straight up. But, um, so yeah, so, and then I got to train with, um, with the NRL um, group and, um, yeah, so that was like, I remember like I walked in, I was like seeing Connie and, yeah. and, and Manu and um, and Kim and Locke, so mentoring and stuff, I was like, shh, like. You know, day, like, and I was just in school like a year ago, um, and I was just like, "Yo, well." And then, fitness started happening, and then I was like, oh, "Take me home." <laughs> <laughs> but that was cool because, like, we had like someone like the older Tongan boys there, like um, like Sam and and yeah. and his brother and Siwa and stuff. They like took care of all the young fellas and yeah, um, yeah. So. Was there any guys like any specific dudes that kind of took? You under their wing and like kind of looked after you, um, yeah. you know any kind of mentors that you know that really helped you in that in that league space. Yeah, I think like 
all the Tongan brothers. Like, yeah. Like we were all tight and we kind of all looked after each other. Um, and mock each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like, it's like, um, like my mate, like Siwa Togiaho, um, I always forever be grateful for him because like I was staying in Onihanga and I had no car. So like, but he would like always like pick me up and like take me yeah, to trainings yeah. and then drop me off home. So yeah, like I'll always be grateful for him and like look at his like success now. Like, you know, I think he's won two um, championships yeah. with um, the Roosters and then obviously Tonga beating um, the Kangaroos. Is, um, massive. Yeah, is. massive. So, I mean. Bro, um, yeah, and like, I guess, you know, like we, we watch League and we watch like Inglis and SB Dub playing at that time. Like who, who, who were the guys that when you played against you were like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, who bro, did? I remember like my first couple of games, I was like, I was like, you know, like whoa, yeah. Um, I think like, I think it was more like my second game. We played like the Cowboys, and um, I was playing wing. Don't know. <laughs> don't know. Just don't know. speed, dog. <laughs> no speed, they no just, height. They just kicked <laughs> the high balls to you. Right? <laughs> and then, um, like in league, like on the fourth tackle, like you drop back. So the ball came our way, and then I started like dropping back. And then I seen like Thurston looking at me, bro. And he's like, like started pointing, like, like doing funny faces to me, bro. And then he like put up this big ass bomb. Bro, I was just like, please help me. <laughs> My legs are shaking, but lucky I just caught it. And, um, and then like the next game, um, I think someone got injured and then I got moved to center. <laughs> and then Greg, uh, Greg Inglis was playing center. Oh. Um, and then, yeah. Is he hard to tackle? Yeah, like I was scared. Like I was like, you know, yeah. like you know, when you're in school, like you watch like yeah, the yeah. highlights, like whoa, you're you practicing know? to be like. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's like big English up here, and he's like a little short self, just but nah, but like you know, it was like it was just an amazing journey, and then like also like I remember like one moment, I think like the boys would probably crack up, like um, so like at, like on the first tackle when they kick it long, like the fullback takes it. And then, like, because me and Connie, like, we used to, like, well, we used to kind of run hard on the first or second tackle. And then I was like, yo, like, Shawnee, like, give me the short ball. I want to go hard. And then, and then I saw, like, Steve Meadow. <laughs> saw Steve Meadow, like, lining me up. And I was like, oh, no, nah, go the other way. <laughs> give it to Connie. But, like, yeah, I just remember, like, stuff like that. Like, I just laugh about it now because, like, like when I was, like, in school, like I used to watch Steve Meadow hits. I was like, nah, I'm not gonna be you on his side. Right, right. <laughs> so, but see, now you're making highlights of you doing nah, that to nah, other nah. people. Hey. Nah, so oh, like, man. Yeah. but I loved it. The Warriors, eh? it was yeah, because there's such a like. People always say like, oh, they're unfit. Mm. Um, is that true, bro? Like, but because I yeah. spoke to one of the trainers that used to train, and he said, bro, like the boys are like the hardest workers there. Bro. It's just like you know, people always trying to blame like fitness. Yeah. And stuff like that. What, like, what, what's your take on that? Well, my thing is like, well, like, I don't know about other teams, but like, I feel like when I was there and like watching the boys now, like, bro, they work hard as like, yeah. they look like they're the ones who work the hardest. But you know, like, um, like the public don't really see that kind of thing. Yeah. And, and even when I was there, like, we were working hard, but we just weren't getting the results. And like, um, you know, it's just easy for people to to knock down teams that are not doing well, you know. Yeah. Yep. So, I don't, yeah. That's part of it, eh? And you, like, look across at America, bro, like, they just have diehard fans. That doesn't matter if you lose, win. Yeah. Like, there's always those people that are always supporting you. Yeah, yeah. And, like, like, you see it, like, in union and league, like, bro, fans are never happy. Like, you win, it's like, oh, I didn't win, good. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, you lose, it's like, oh, you guys not good enough. So, it's just like. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, you're never going to satisfy um, you know, everyone, as long as, I think as long as your brothers are happy and, you know, that's all that matters. Ah, and then obviously, um, you know, from the Warriors, because how many years did you do at the Warriors? Also? I did like four or five. Yeah, I did like four or five and then, um, yeah. And then, um, you know, you you made the big call to come back to Union, um, you know, where everything started. Yeah. Um, you know, what, what, what made you um, think of coming? Were you thinking about it? <laughs> Before you made the decision, like what was what was the thought process was all? Yeah. So like, like when I was playing twenties and stuff like that, and and 
in the words in it, like, because like when I left school, like, because I saw it league as like quicker to get up, because like in, um, in rugby like you gotta go through twenties and then you gotta get ITM, ITM and then yeah yeah. But like at the time in league it was like twenties in NRL, you know. Yeah. So, but at the back of my head, I was like, I'm always gonna come back to you, and like no matter what. And then, like, I saw you guys, like, you and Jason there, like, in the 20s, and then, like, started playing, like, ITM. I was like, man, like, I played with those guys. Like, you yeah. know, I can, you know, I want to go back and play with those guys. And, you know, I, was, I, I love playing rugby. Like, you know, that was my first game that, you know, we ever played. And then, like, yeah, so we had, like, a preseason game. And then, like, not much people know the story, but so, like, yeah, so like I played a preseason game, like you know, their off season, like this is probably like the hardest I've ever worked. Was this union or league? Ah, uh, league, league, oh, so yeah, yeah. league. So this was like my last year at the Warriors. Yeah, uh, like I worked, worked my, you know, worked my butt off, and then, and then, yeah, and then like I think like preseason game, like we played, and then we had like a fitness on like a Monday or Tuesday, and then I remember I just like went to step, yeah, then boom, like I dropped, and then I did my ACL, and then um. Yeah, so I like did my ACL and then I um, was injured for a bit and then I played like one game for New South Wales Cup. Yeah, because they were like, oh, you know, if you rehab it, you can come back and play, in, you know, in three weeks. But me being as like a twenty year old, twenty one year old, like you know, not realizing like, bro, you just ruptured your ACL, you know, like. Mm-hmm. But for me, as a you know, because I was young, you know, just just hungry to play, you know, and then yeah. I was like, oh. Okay then, so I rehabbed the three weeks, um, played one game for New South Wales Cup, and then I got called, called back into the top team, and then um, like the captain run, I just went to step, and then I dropped, and then I like, and that's when I knew it was gone, and then like a couple of years, uh, a couple of weeks after, um, you know, I was, you know, a couple of weeks after the Warriors were gonna resign me, and yeah. then just before I got injured, and then um, you know, and then a couple of weeks after they were like, oh. Um, hey mate, uh, or oh, you got another option, but you can go if you want. And then uh, I was like, oh, okay. And then at the time, like, you know, like uh, my partner was pregnant, like Mavis, like we had seal, yeah, like you know. And then like I, you know, I didn't know if I had a job a year yeah, after. Yeah, yeah. So like there was a lot of things going through my head at the time. And then um, it was like one day I remember like me and me and Mavis like talking hard out. And then I was like to her, I was like. Like I want to go back and try and give it a crack, and like I know when I'm like sixty years old, like if I don't go back, I know I'm gonna regret it for the rest of my life, mm. you know. And then I was just like, oh, um, like if I go back home to Wally's or Palmy or whatever, um, I didn't know if I was gonna go back to Wally's, but I was just like, oh, if I go back to rugby, like um, you know, like I'll need you, like come, like help follow me. And and she just looked at me and she was like, oh, yo, like I got you. No matter what oh. happens, and then I was just like, "Oh, yep, okay, I want to do it." But at the time, I was like scared as, <laughs> I was oh. like, "Yeah," so I was like scared as, and then like, um, and then like I heard of my manager, and I was like, "Oh, like, is there anything in rugby?" And that's why I'm a true believer in things happen for a reason, bro. Because in 2015, Martin Conrad were leaving, and if I didn't get injured, you know, you never know what would happen. You know, I could have yeah. stood in the woods, but. You know, I'm too believing things happen for a reason. So, like, I got injured, and then, um, obviously, with Matt and Conrad leaving, there was like two midfield spots open, and then my manager hit up the Canes, and then the next day the Canes were like, yeah, we're keen, like, yeah, yeah. And then I was just like, yo, pack my bags. You know, I was just like stoked, like happy as, like, you know, I've, there's a door open, you know, and then, yeah, and that's how I ended up at the Hurricanes. Yo, and like, was it tough? Like coming, switching over because like I know rugby can be like rugby union is like a real like technical tactical mm-hmm. game as you know now. Yeah. Like was it hard as a midfield coming in and trying to learn? But how was that first year? Was that kind of like more of a year of learning for you or were you? Yeah, like <coughs> bro, it was hard. Eh? <laughs> it was hard. Like I remember my, like my first training session. Like I think I was on defense, and like obviously in league, like you know you make a tackle and you start running back. And then, like, yeah, I don't know what I was thinking, eh? like, stupid ass, but, yeah, so, like, we went to defend, and then the, I think one of the boys made a tackle, and then, like, I turned around, 
and ran back like 10 meters, like think I was still in league. I was, <laughs> yeah, it's a steep but, yeah. <laughs> but um, like there was so much things that I had to learn. Um, but like, to be honest, like my first year, I was just like freestyling at it. Yeah. Like I thought I'd be able to come back and just like, be all good. Yeah. But then, yeah, I got to like, so like, yeah, but a big wake up call. That, yeah. yeah. Who, um, who helped you? Who helped you in that transition, bro? Like in, in the midfield or, or just sitting down with you, talking through the game? Because I, like, I, we still struggle now to yeah. like try and understand the game. Yeah. Like imagine it coming from league to, you yeah. know, union, bro. Like who, yeah, who, 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 who are the guys or people, you know, that kind of helped you in the game? Yeah, it was like, it was definitely Alfie. Like, it's um, <laughs> your dad, Alfie. <laughs> nah, yeah, no, nah, but no, nah, Alfie spent, me and Alfie spent a lot of time um, we, uh, talking about my skills yeah. <laughs> and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you laughing like that? Because <laughs> uh, nah. all the boys are going to yeah, be like, yeah. Right. <laughs> but, yeah, so, nah. like, yeah, like when I was in one or two and that, like he would drive down the me, like would work on Ooh. like my skills and that, um, and that, and then like, but like there was another person who helped me out as well. It was like Willis, Willis Halaholo, because um, like the first couple of games it was me and Vince. Yeah, we started, and when I think about it now, it's like probably like <laughs> we know nothing. Yeah, like we knew Jack, like when we first played. Yeah. Um, with me and Vince because we was like we were still young, young and eh? stuff and but like yeah but Willis took me under his wing as well like like some people like look at Willis there like you know like they think he's like um, you know like too gangster or something but like but he's he actually kind. like yeah sit down with Willis and just like bro, he's got so much knowledge and like he was giving me so much info like that, like I didn't even know like mm-hmm. and like he was just teaching me stuff like on the field um and then, like, obviously, like, you know, the team went well in there and he was just, like, still teaching me, like, um, telling me things to do and, and that. And bro, I just learned heaps of for me. Oh, that's mean. That's mean, bro. And it, it always helps when you've got, like, someone that you look up, or not necessarily look up to, but someone that kind of takes the time to, like, put you under their wing and <clears throat> and, and learn from. Um, but, like, you know, obviously that's, like, the rugby, up to super rugby and stuff like that. But I know you've had a hell of a journey like outside of footy, yeah. um, tell us a bit about that. Like I know you had a Maria at a very young age, bro, and like at a young age, and you just said you went straight to pro footy straight after school. Like tell us a bit about that journey, bro, and 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 the I guess the blessings and like the the challenges that you had. Yeah, bro. Like yeah. So like I remember like um like. Uh, I remember like I had a Monday morning training with the team like this is when I was in high school first 15 training and then I uh, could hear my brother's car like roll up and um, and he was like bro jump in the car like like Maria is just about to be born like you need to get to the hospital <laughs> I laugh about it now but I was like to my boys like hey brothers I gotta, I'm gonna have a kid I'll see you guys later but like you can laugh you, about it now Were you seeing form? Yeah Last yeah year. so yeah, so like I just turned eighteen, so this is my seventh form year. Yep. Um, you know, having Maria, bro. And at that time, bro, like, sorry, at that time, like I was scared. Like yeah. I didn't know what I was going into, but um, you know, I was just scared, bro. And then like, um, um, but I'm lucky, like you know, her mum did a good job of, of bringing her up, and and yeah. and um, I'm lucky that I had my family too, especially my mum. Yeah. Um, you know, and my daughter's relationship with my mum is um, real close. And, um, yeah, bro, and then we did hostel. Maria was born and then, yeah, so I was at school with a, with a kid. And, uh, like, at the time, like like, like I said, I was scared. But, like, um, it kind of gave me more of a purpose to, to train harder and to work harder so that um, my daughter needed to think I'd go, keep going. So. Yeah, bro. Um, were there any like um, challenges, you know, like um, having Maria at a young age and then trying to pursue like a rugby career, or was that all good because you got you had like massive support? Or how did you find that, bro? Like mentally, or was that all good? Yeah, it was all good, bro. Because like um, my daughter's mum's family, like you know, um, 
they did a good job of yeah. um, taking care of Maria um, and stuff. And then when I left to the Warriors and stuff, so um, like everything was all good. And then like um, my daughter got to come out to my games, and, yeah. and that was cool. And um, you know, I got to spend some weekends with my daughter as well, uh, which was cool. So yeah, so it ended up working all good. Was, um, so like you know, as a young kid, you're like, bro, I'm like, I don't know what to do. Like I'm scared. Like you know, I can't even do my homework. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got to clean your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so you get from there to changing nappies and stuff, bro. But um, you know, I'm real lucky that I had my mum. My mum yeah. um, was like, you, know, you go do your rugby thing. You go do um, school. I didn't even do any school work, but um, my mum was like, you know, you do that. I'll take care of Baba and, and stuff. It's like our that. parents' eh, also. Yeah, hard, bro. Yeah. Hard. Bro, man, and then obviously, you know, you've got your beautiful partner, Mavis, and um, little Seal now. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> how's, um, how's the family also? How's it um, been, you know, with like having kids? And like, you know, you seem like, you know, you're, 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 you're the shiny light and, and, and whatever room you are also. So how's, how's the family, bro? Like, how's that been? Has that kind of given you like a sense of new purpose in terms of why you do your thing? Yeah, bro. Like, um, like the only reason why I'm still going is because of my kids and, and, and my partner. Like, um, you know, like there's the only reason why I keep going every day. I mean, training gets hard and stuff. Um, because, you know, for me, like my kids are first, you know, for me, like, um, when I was younger there, like, we didn't really have a rich upbringing, but, you know, we had massive love. Um, so, 100%. Um, for me, like, the reason why I'm playing rugby is so that um, my kids, uh, um, so that when they grow up, they don't have to worry about wanting to get things. They don't have to worry about paying for school trips and stuff like that. Um, you know, I want them to grow up and know that they can do whatever they want. Their dad will take care um, of, them, eh? of everything. Financially and stuff like that, so um, that's for you. That's why I play rugby. Man, and um, I guess like you know, for any anyone out there that's got like, I guess that uh, in that situation that you were, bro, like what what's the I guess like any advice that you'd give you know to them that if they're in that in that position you were at the moment, bro. Well, uh, now or when I was yeah so like if anyone's in this position now that's listening yeah. that's you know like young and yeah. looking to have Baba yeah um, what's like some advice like that you could give them or yeah. um, you know like yeah. from your experiences um, I think for me like like I'm not the best there like I'm still learning yeah. like I'm not going to say that I'm the best there but I'm still learning and stuff like that but I think time is the most important thing like um, like not buying your kids like the flashes, toys, blah blah blah, um, but just be know, present. Hey? Yeah, just spending time like taking them to the park or you know, for me mm-hmm. like I always take my kids to McDonald's because that's all they want, <laughs> um, you know. Um, and just yeah, I think just being present is the most important thing because like, as you know, like we're away a lot. Um, Hard. Eh? Sometimes we come home we're tired from training, you know. But that's not our kids' fault, you know. Hard. You know, that's just a part of. Our job, um, so I think just being prison. Yeah, because yeah, I find myself like, like I'm with like my with Kobe, and like I'll be like I'm prison, but I like on my phone. Yes. Yeah, Sometimes I catch myself and I'm like, damn, I need to like actually yeah. be interactive with her because I'm like sitting on the couch and she's doing her own thing, playing yeah. with her toys, but I'm like, oh, like sometimes I catch myself like oh, I need to get out of that hard bro. and that's one of my goals too. Yeah, she yeah. is like. Um, like not being on my phone so much just like yeah. how have you found um, balancing you know like rugby and family and stuff like that you know because footy can take so much you know of your energy and then you come back home and then you're like oh I just want to rest bro so how has it been all good yeah it's like I guess it's just like a learning process like yeah um, yeah like you said like bro you get home you're tired you just got smashed during the day but you know, in the day, like um, your dad first, yeah. uh, forty second. But like my mindset is like, um, like I put everything into rugby, so that because um, obviously rugby can take you places, um, yep. set you up, 
um, financially and, and stuff like that after rugby. But um, sometimes I'm like I'm a little bit selfish, yeah, um, because I'm scared that um, if I don't be a little bit selfish, I'm not going to go out and perform yeah, yeah, in the yeah. way that you know that I want to perform on the weekend. So, um, but at the same time, like um, like I do, you know, do my part at home. I clean the dishes, Mavis. <laughs> <laughs> She's probably listening. Go, yep. Um, I shot also, and like obviously, I put it out on the gram um, for um, fans or people that want to ask you some questions. And I've just picked out a few to ask you also. Yeah, and the number one question that come come out that that came out was um, World Cup selection. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously, you're you know on form. You know, like you've been on fire for the last two years and missed out on selection, bro. And, um, yeah, how how was that, bro? How would you deal with it? How did you feel when you heard, got the call or actually what happened, you know? Yeah. Because <laughs> you haven't spoken about it, eh? Yeah, it's yeah. This will be the first time. Yeah, so this will be like my first time speaking about it. Um, I've only spoken to it about with close people that yeah, I trust yeah, and yeah. stuff. But, um, yeah, so... <laughs> Like what happened was like I think it was like a Wednesday night or something. Like I got a call, um, but I kind of knew the call was coming. Like you, you know, when you're in teams, you can like sense, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. like what's coming and stuff. And like I knew, like kind of, I kind of knew it was gonna come because you know, like yeah, a lot of other stuff. But um, so yeah, like I think for me, bro, I was just like I was gutted. But then when I saw my partner, like you know, like. Mm-hmm. Thing I was just like, oh, like you know, it's gonna be all good. It's yeah. gonna be all good, man. Like, you know, like you know, when we like finish campaigns and they're like, um, they give us like training training programs. Yeah. <clears throat> and then like the next day, I was scheduled to run. Yeah. And not much, you know, I was like, I was scheduled to run the next day, and then, um, like I woke up, like so I got the call. Um, sweet as um, you know, obviously gutted, but you know, seeing my partner pretty gutted was um, you know, kind of hit home. But then I was just like in that mentality of like, yo, um, it's either I fold now or I walk into this challenge um, that I'm about to face, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then um, so like I had a running schedule program the next day, and then I woke up in the morning. I was like, oh, I can either just sit here and. And just hate the world, and and just ask why, like why, why, why blah, 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 or get I'll up just, and go to work. Eh? Yeah, just get up and just and just you know and just um, go to work, and and then my partner was like, oh, do you want me to come? I was like, nah, nah, it's like it's all good. Like this is one of the things that like I just got to do by myself. Yeah. So like I walked down, like so I went down the road um, to my training ground and and just ran, bro, and just like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Was just like did that fitness session, and then I just messaged my family. Like I was like, oh, like I'm okay. Like because yeah. I knew my family were like worried, um, worried about especially me. Mommy. Yeah, yeah, especially mum. Like um, even leaving her, you know, like I didn't make it. Was like you know, hearing her on the phone was was you know. But um, you know, I'm like I said before, like, bro, I'm a true believer in everything happens for a reason. reason. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, I can look myself in the mirror and be like, yo, I gave it everything. Um, and in a day it just didn't, just didn't uh, happen, yeah it just didn't happen so um, I'm sure you that Yo, and like I guess you know missing World Cup you know you would have had to go and play ITM yep. um, and like you said it's, you could either go in there and muck around and just take it take it easy yep. or you can go in there and like actually you know what I'm going to put my best foot forward what was your mindset um, going into that campaign also? yeah bro so like <laughs> pretty much like once I got the call um, um, from the, the selectors of the ABs and that, I was just like, oh, sweet, boom, hanged up. Um, did my run the next day, called the two base coach straight away, and I was just like, um, give me two days, I'll be ready to come back to work on Monday. And they had a Ramfley Shield challenge on the Friday, I think. Yeah, but I just, like, I was just like, nah, I'm like, I'm not in the right headspace. Like, I need two more days. So, and like going back to Monaco two, like. Um, I think I feel like that was probably like be one of the best things in my career because um, going into that environment, seeing a lot of players who, who are hungry to make it, and guys who just love to play footy and be around each other, like 
it just made me realize like um you're blessed eh? yeah bro yeah. And, um and like like you said like it was it was a hard challenge like you know i'm not gonna lie like i went in there like the team wasn't going well like what can i do to get this team back on track so i pretty much just went in there bro and just um did everything I could to to get the team going and and um, just try to be a professional, bro. Man, did you have much support around you when the news came out? Um, yeah, like there was a lot of people like reaching out, <coughs> reaching out to me and stuff like that, and and that was all good. Um, and I, I appreciate that for me one that um, dropped me all those messages and stuff like that. Um, but you know, in the, the day, like. You know, for me, like I keep my circle pretty small. Like I got my good mates, got my good rugby mates, and then obviously I got my partner and my family, and mum there. So Yo. Um, that's all I need. Like yeah, bro. Um, like we can cut this out if you want. But like, did you were you able to deal with this news better than remember the um you told me in Japan mm, about mm, that yeah, that yeah, news yeah. like yeah, and so, give us what, yeah. Yeah, what was that like I th- yeah I can't like that. I I think the first time getting dropped from the All Blacks was like. Harder than yeah. When was that? When was that? Two thousand eighteen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two thousand eighteen. So, um, yeah. So that was like hard. Um, you know, the first time I got dropped because I kind of didn't really deal with it because I didn't know why I got dropped. You know, yeah. and then probably like the same thing happened, and then I like, got dropped. But um, I feel like yeah, I feel like there's like you either. Walk away from the challenge, or you either walk forward. Yeah, bro. And, but you know it's okay to to moan and cry, and, and you know it's all part of the process. Um, you know the sun's always gonna wake um, coming next day. Hard also, and um, you know you're doing something right, bro. When your name doesn't get read out, and like you just see your face pop up everywhere, and like a lot of people are uh, are saying that you should be yeah. in the team, and you should you know, should be playing. It's just a testament to. Like I guess who you are and the player you like have been, have been or the player that you've been like that you are. Um, so for people to talk like that, yeah, bro. And like like I said, bro, like I appreciate the love and that support from everyone. Hard. Um, so yeah, my man. And obviously, um, another question was uh, on a lighter note: uh, <laughs> your max squat. Your max bench and your max deadlift, because I know you're a bit of a gym junkie these days, and you hate your, you know, you love your, you love your gym. Yeah, nah. Don't be humble now, because you're never nah. humble. Yeah. But I feel like I'm not lifting as much as I used to because I'm getting like, I feel like I'm, I feel like an old man. <laughs> man, like because preseason's been tough, bro. Um, yeah. So yeah, like. Probably just squatting like 140 and then benching like 120. Um, what? Yeah. <laughs> you, bro. Yeah, yeah. Last so, year you were benching yeah, like 200. Yeah, nah, nah, so yeah. <laughs> My man, and uh, the other questions, bro, um, your thoughts on um, TikTok, social media, um, in this day and age? Yeah, bro, like, yeah. Like, everyone has their own opinion on like social media and stuff, but... I feel like because you're, you're a bit of a you're TikTok famous now before you <laughs> like your your TikToks and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, but like yeah, I feel like it's it's just fun and games, bro. Like it's not anything serious, bro. I'm not really like my messages are not really like out there to hurt anyone or or anything, bro. It's just 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 me being a clown, bro, and just people seeing the other side of me. Like Yo. I'm not just a person that just focuses on rugby all the time. Like I like to have a bit of a laugh and joke around, like. Yeah, bro, and like with social media, like obviously that's moving, like and growing at a rapid rate. But like I, I feel like rugby's still stuck behind in the old ways, bro. Do you think um, we need to, as like a whole sport, need to like adapt and like actually embrace kind of that the the digital world instead of going, no, that's not how we used to do it. We don't, you know, like do that. We don't put ourselves out there. We don't do that. Do you reckon that's bad because it's kind of putting us in a box where we're just rugby players? Whereas in social media, like our mindset now, yeah. you knew we talk about it, is that it's a chance now for fans and people to actually see who we are outside of the game? Yeah, 100% bro. Like, I like, I remember like I talk to people like, um, like people that haven't met me that I've met 
like a drink cups or something like that. But they're like, oh, bro, like I thought you were just like an angry guy. Like, I'm like, just because you're running over guy. Yeah, like, nah, like, they're like, that's what they think because they see it on yeah, TV. But yeah, like when yeah. they talk to me, they're like, oh, bro, like, yeah. like just just one of us, you know? It's and, normal. And, so. and, you know, like, I guess I understand people's perspective of like, you know, of um, of like, you know, wanting us to just be rubby, 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 but bro, like you, you're, you're burning out, bro. Like if you just rubby, rubby, rubby all the time, bro. So uh, I think if you just be yourself, bro, and see the people will love you, bro, or they hate you, and, and doesn't really matter. So and um, the last question, bro, like your interest outside of footy, bro. What do you what are you into? Um, yeah, like I don't have like oh like like I'm interested in like. Um, NFL like basketball and stuff but like I don't really have anything else apart from yeah. sports you're a bit of a b-ball player eh? uh, don't nah, be nah, nah I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, yeah guys is being humble now yeah so um, yeah but, yeah for me because it's like I just train go home yeah, yeah. Um, kids um, watch a bit of league or, or you know because yeah, so, then you play a bit of Fortnite yeah, so uh, I was pretty gaming pretty hard, bro. Because um, I just loved the fact that, like, because I, like, I'd catch up with friends. Um, yeah, yeah. Like, from, like, when I was at school and that, like, he had a friend and, you know, we just end up connecting and it's just like, bro, we haven't talked in, like, 10 years. So it's just, like, playing game, like, talking at the same time, which is, like, mean. Um, but then, like, yeah, I was getting a little bit too... Too addicted to to Fortnite, bro. So I just um stopped playing, and it's probably been like a month and a bit now. I'll stop playing. So yeah, what do you do now? Why are you not playing Fortnite? Uh, probably need to um, get off TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, bro. But you, uh, you mentioned to me before you listen to podcasts, eh? Yeah, yeah. So I'm listening to podcasts as well. Just just trying to um just trying to open my mind up, bro. Like Yo. and start thinking about life. After footy and stuff like that, because you know, like as rugby players, bro, we're so like, you know, like into rugby, bro. Like nothing else matters. We just zoom in and then we go home. It's all about the family, you know. Hard and and our life are so backwards, bro. We finish school, um, we like get paid all this money till we're like thirty, and then it either slows right down or it like completely stops. Whereas in the normal like average Joe, finish school, go to uni, they grind it out, get a job. And then they start making the the coin like at a later age, and they can live their lives. Where our ones like, yeah, hard, bro. And that's and 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 that's one of my biggest fears, bro. Is like when I finish, like you know, like what else is there, like mm. you know? So for me, it's just about like I just train so hard that like um, that I'm gonna do the best as I can while the time I'm in rugby, so that when I finish, bro, my kids don't have to worry about anything. Hard. Nah, thanks also. I better let you go um, to um, one of your many promos that you have with um, sponsors. But uh, thanks for coming on. Also, I know uh, we've been chatting about um, doing this, and um, you know it's awesome that the people um, when I mentioned it on Instagram, they were keen to you know like listen and jump on. But just want to thank you for coming on. Also, cheers, bro. Let's go. Cool.